The world is old and the powers are weary. The god at the door of night has fallen and the great enemy of the world has come back from the timeless void. The shadow has awakened the great evils to regain dominion over Ardar. Darkness shall cover the land if not for the deeds of a small fellowship of elf friends. Join the players of this Dungeons & Dragons campaign as they fulfill the events of the Dagor Daggeroth prophecy and strive with Morgoth on the plains of Valinor. Welcome to the Undying Lands in Part 3 of the Glory and Bastards trilogy, Trials of the Valor. The bite there. He gets advantage? Yeah, because it burns next to it. Oh, shit. All right. How much damage? I want I want him to take one more swipe at Burn so I can tell Spriggs Burn went down. <laughs> I figure that, so 14. All right, he's still up. All right. That's it, man. Burn's done. You go down prone. Uh, I, have to, I have to do a save for him. Hold on. Uh, oh, what is it? A strength save. Okay, let me see. This is the last save I hope I have to do tonight. Uh, what is DC? Yes, he does fall down. You fucker. <laughs> but but he gets back up on his turn, and uh, he's basically I've been knocked up. Uh, all right, and three attacks on Burin. Here we go. Moment of truth, everybody. <laughs> With disadvantage, right? No, no. He has. He doesn't have disadvantage. No, he doesn't have a metal crutch. That's right. Uh, miss hit, miss. So he does thirteen damage. Oh my god, you kidding. How much did he have left? Well, it's rounded out of six, right? Yeah. Oh, puts him did I get him? Like, yeah, you got him. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, uh, is that one door one more death save? No, it's still so your... Brent's still level 14, so you didn't really get him. He would have had way more hit points. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you yeah, failed your first. Like 20 hit points here. There you go. You didn't get him. He's down. He, no way. He didn't level, man. He didn't level. That's how we're doing it. I got him. I got him. All right. All right. Tessero, you're up. One guy left. Put him down. All right. I did a death save. All right, then. So MJ failed his first death save. Uh, it means two more and you're dead. What, two more fails? Yeah. All right. And this guy's gone. This guy's dead. All right, guys. So you see a whole nother wave of soldiers coming out, and the the Noldor the Noldor soldiers start like like filling in, uh, they, and they they motion you back to Tyrion to like drag your comrades back to Tyrion. Wait, wait, we didn't kill. Disregard this guy. Which guy? Oh, disregard, disregard this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should we come back over there? Nah, it says to disregard. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the DM just disregarded him. That's my first thought. I was just holding up a sign. <laughs> Uh, all right so all right so you guys uh the, the elves help you revive burin and the zelendor uh they unfortunately can't help you revive okrin um oh wait a minute wait a minute hang what's, on what's that for burin if you drop to zero hit points while in the middle of your fury you don't <laughs> die and you don't die ever Shit. you can you can make a dc 10 constitution savings throw all right if you drop to one hit point instead all right do that i want to see i think I, I still have faith that i'm going to take him down <laughs> oh man, I can't, I can't like think good faith. Do it, yeah. do it, do it. Alright, Burn, all saves, Constitution. Can you even roll? Oh man, <laughs> that was like a middle finger in my face right there. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, burned. I didn't get burned. So you guys managed to drag his Ellen door. 14. And Faraday was still away, uh, alive too, wasn't he? Well, only because, only because um, he killed me. I, I did drop once. Yeah. All right. Drop once, yeah. Burned that one hit point. So you guys, um, so the, the elves, the Noldor elves managed to fight off um, the the first wave of, of people from the fake, uh, Caves of the Forgotten, but the Fenarfin tells you, um, let me take you back to, to Tyrion. Fenarfin tells you that they're not sure how many Numenorians will keep pouring out and that um, you need to continue on, on your mission. Um, so they offer you a long rest here, obviously, um, while the battle is still continuing. And they, they tell you that your, your next, um, your next uh, part of your, um, your quest will be to, to hear the, the third part of the, of the prophecy uh, from Ingve, or Ingwe up, um, up on the tallest mountain, Tani Quetel. That's where, that's where the, the palace is uh, called Ilmarin. Um, so I'd, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to take you up there and we can kind of end up there. 
Um, and when you get up there, you see, uh, you say, you see uh, like a throne room, um, that faces East it has a beautiful view and, and you feel like, uh, just, just being inside this room and looking out the window, you can, you can see, like, you feel like your eyes, um, can see all the way over to middle earth. Um, uh, and it, it's just, it's just like this spectacular view and, um, you're so high up and, uh, in the room you see, look, looks like they're like almost frozen in time. These, they almost look like statues that these, um, they're, they're, they're like humanoid, but they, you know, their faces are, they shine with light. Um, and some of them, even, even in their like frozen state, you can barely look upon them. Um, and you know, these, these to be, uh, eight of the valley. Are. Um, so they are Aule, who created the uh, dwarves, Tolkis, who is in the prophecy of Mandos, uh, Lorien, also called Irmo, uh, Orome, Yavana, uh, Varda, Vanya, and Ulmo. Um, and in front of you is Ingwe, the uh, high king of the Vanyar, and high, also high king of the elves. He greets you and welcomes you to Ilmarin, and um, and and then basically tells you. Um, uh, well, I, I'll see if you have any questions for him first. You guys have a few more minutes. Wait, so so these are the, the gods? They are. Oh, she except for Ingwe, she's an elf, but like I don't show elves. Yep. Uh, so I'm going to read to you a piece of, um, let's see. So the, in the first part of the prophecy that I wrote, that I read to you tonight, remember this part, when the world is old and the powers have grown weary. So if you're wondering, if you're wondering why the Valar haven't, um, done much is that they have grown weary, 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 like, uh, tired or weary, like, Hey, I'm kind of bored of this. Well, you, Wait, could, so you, you said they look like statues. Yeah, right? they, they, yeah, kind of. Um, you know, they, they kind of, they appear to be like almost swaying in the wind, um, and the light flickers in their in their faces, um, but the their bodies are not moving. Should they be moving? So you, you guys are asking Ingwe? Sure. Why, not? why does each one of them have a toilet behind them? <laughs> well, they don't move a lot, so you gotta go. <laughs> Um, uh, so they, Ingwe would say, um, you know, that through the ages, um, their, their separation from the light has, uh, the light of the two trees have made them weak and weary and how, um, that they, um, they lack the strength to combat Morgoth by themselves. Um, so we can hold them. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Um, um, yeah, I mean, Ingwe would basically say he, he, he's heard of some of the things that you've done and he's, he's been expecting you. Um, and, uh, he, he's, uh, he'd like to tell you the third part of the prophecy if that's, you know, sure. Uh-huh. All, right. Well, All right. So uh, he says, uh, thereafter shall the earth be broken and remade, and the Silmarils shall be recovered out of the air and earth and sea, and Feanor shall surrender them willingly. Yavanna will rekindle the two trees, and a great light shall come forth. And the mountains of Valinor shall be leveled, so that the light shall go out all over the world. And that light, the Valar, will grow young again. And the elves awake, and all their dead arise. And the purpose of Iluvatar, the one god, be fulfilled concerning them. But the men in that day, the prophecy of Mandos, doth, doth, doth not speak. And no man it names, save Turin only. So they don't know what's going to happen to men, or they do know what's going to happen to men? They don't know. I think. So only Turin. Yeah, remember what it said about turn and the prophecy. Uh, the overhead killing below. Oh, Morgoth. Correct. I get you. But, Feedback, huh? but what you see, and uh, Ingwe tells you that what you see in part three are the tasks that you must undertake in order to to um, to basically make the fight against Morgoth successful and to 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 make the Valar young again. Let's recover the Semel or something. Yeah, we're, we're, we already got one of those. All right. <laughs> so he would he would present to you. Um, uh, he would walk you up to the to the northern wall, and he would show you um, something that he calls the octagon, or I'm sorry, the octogram of Ilmarin. And I'm going to share that with you now. And this is the um, 
Uh, it looks like this. Whoa. And this sort of this is where the choose your own adventure comes in for the the remaining part of this campaign. Um, based on what he just read to you or said to you in the prophecy, in the part, part three of the prophecy, um, there are tasks that must be undertaken, and they are associated with the eight Valar in this room. There are also sort of little pictures next to each one of them. Um, um, so you can ask him about them now, um, but it is 10 after 11. If you, if you want to do this in chat, we can, this is something that would be really great to chat about. Um, and, and I can answer questions. There are, there are going to be some things that you, that you, you want to think about the prophecy and you want to think about what you would want to happen before other things. Right. Um, for example, um, uh, Marco has a sword that he wants to be crafted by the elves. Well, the elves are dead, right? So the prophecy tells you how to bring the elves back, so to speak, um, or, or it hints at it. So you, these are things you're going to have to discuss and think about and decide which trial you want to do first. Well, after seeing his performance today, I suggest we get him a decent sword. <laughs> Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do we, uh... How do we know which child does what? Right, yes. Well, the, the pictograms, or the little pictures, should allude to some of them. Um, if you don't know what it means, you, you could definitely ask him. He's he's willing to, um, and he tells you also that Ilmarin um, is going to act as a, as a gateway to all parts of Middle-earth. Um, so if oh, a, that's cool. so if a, if a trial um, and, and the the time uh, the whole like time thing uh, may be less of an issue this way, um, yeah. so he, uh, he he says that you can basically come and go and through all parts of Arda um, from Ilmarin. That would have been helpful for that sixty year you know voyage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the raindrop and the fire mean, but the, there's the two trees there. I just assume those are the two trees that the yeah. Like. Yeah, the colors and the um, swoops between, anything where there's, you know, like they kind of three of them get connected. No, the the color of the octogram itself, he says, is doesn't hold meaning. Yeah. It's just like the, so the trial of Yvonne is going to do the silver tree, and then the trial of Irma is going to do the gold tree. And do we wait for those to do those last? I don't know. I don't, I, bring the elves the, for it, right? What's that? <laughs> but the two trees will bring the elves back. Oh, all right. Yes. It says that the uh, the mountains will be leveled and light will go out and then the elves will wake. He says um, he says that um, he says that his people care greatly about the the gems of our people, um, and so that um, they give a shit about the trees. They want the diamond. <laughs> so the. It's the light of the trees that will bring the elves back, um, and, and the light of the tree. Right, the light of the trees are in the Silmarils. So there's a couple different ways. There's a couple different ways you could go with that. It sounds like. What's the chain? Uh, um, let's see if let me look at the. Yeah, it's, it's not in your lower. Wait, I accidentally closed it. Um, I'll, I'll bring it back up. So the um, so the the trial of Aule. Um, Aule is the master smith and the uh, father of the dwarves, and he um, he's the one that taught the Noldor how to make all the magic items, and he also made the chain that bounded Morgoth. Um, and Morgoth has obviously broken that chain, and so it needs to be reforged for the last battle. And so you you um, you will require you will acquire um, some of the the most precious metals in in, in Arda to reforge Didn't it. Did he also reforge this or those things? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Um, gonna that it looks like, like the trial. Of, if I had to guess, the trial of Almo. Almo's the the one in the, in the sea, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Isn't that the symbols probably got lost in the in the bottom of the ocean? So yeah. So you found the one in the in the earth. Um, you know. Yeah. You know that there was one in the sky, but it got knocked out of the sky. But you know there is one in the ocean, correct? Yeah, so that's probably how we get that symbol is through that trial. Um, this is the harp about. 
the trial of Orome. So Orome is a woodsman. He was um, he was one of the first Valar to travel very far, um, uh, to, to basically walk among and, and ride his horse among the uh, the elves. And he traveled into the far the far east, often um, back where the elves uh, awoke in Quivienen. And um, and so that trial involves going very far east to the place that the elves first woke up um to to learn um to learn the music of the Ainur, the Ainulindale. Doesn't sound like the first thing we'll do, but it sounds important. And remember some of the some of these names, uh like Tolkis, you remember, was in the prophecy. Supposedly he is gonna fight with in the last battle. Yeah. What's the tree? The trees are those are the two trees with the lakes. Oh right. Uh some else can go. I think we gotta use this and else to restore the trees somehow. What's the uh what's the uh part there? We just asked that to me. Oh that was that one for okay. Yeah. I don't know what the water drop and the fire flame are. So he, he explains that when it when Ungoliant came to destroy the trees, he also she also drank drank uh empty the the wells of Varda that, that replenished the trees in Azelohar. And um and so um in order to feed the trees once the trees are back the well must be replenished, and the only way to do that is to recover the water from guess you guessed it. Okay. Ungoliant. Yeah. So we are. So it does make sense to do some faster than others. So we got to get the trees. We got to get the water. It's gonna be a while before we actually get to do a decent sword, man. <laughs> Um, so we get let's, yeah. let's talk about this during the week. I think this could make for some interesting conversation. What do you guys think? We're going to do vote, vote, yeah. vote, 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 vote. I, I'll just um, I will need to know sort of what you're going to do. I guess um, can I can I at least uh, maybe you can give me two or three that you're leaning towards. Uh, we vote now. Maybe you switch. Not sure. I mean, if we need the Simmeral, we should probably try to get the Simmeral. Maybe the Simmeral might be pretty. Powerful. Well, he so he explains that there. Um, now that Arendil has been knocked out of the sky, someone will need to um, seek out Arendil and uh, and find that missing Silmaril. Do my vote for that's, that's not on our. Uh, that's not on our octagon. Uh, that is the trial of Vanya. So remember, <laughs> remember, remember what was what else was knocked out of the sky at the same time? The sun and the sun and moon. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know if that meant like restoring the sun and moon because the two trees point to that one. Yeah. But I'm reading too much into the colors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can we tell that the pictograms are a little mysterious, hard to hard to? <laughs> so why can't you just give bit. us a, a, a list of instructions? In order. <laughs> <So cheap, cheap. laughs> Well, they only speak in emojis. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> it's themed <laughs> texts. These are our hieroglyphics, uh, clip art. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you so you're leaning towards either the trial of Ulmo, the trial of Vanya, or something else. Yeah, I'd say one of those two. Yeah, or one of the other six. So, yeah, I'll figure it out. <laughs> All right. Well, I have to have time to plan. So. Um, so let's, def- those yeah, let's definitely like plan to finalize oh, yeah. this maybe midweek. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Thanks. Bye. All right. Cool. Bye, guys. Bye. Though this marks the end of the episode, the road goes ever on. Until next time, join us at longwinded.1 and consider giving us a review on Apple Music, Spotify, or really whichever platform you choose.